into Luke chapter number 18 while you're turning. Anybody want to pop up right quick for the Lord? What a blessing. Go ahead, sister. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 18. Let me turn down just a hair on this, please. Um, the book of Luke chapter 18 is, to me, one of the greatest chapters in the Bible, thorough chapters on teaching on prayer. This morning I preached on fasting. Tonight I preach on prayer. I used to the other way around, prayer and fasting. Uh, I've never preached a whole message on fasting on Sunday morning. Uh, this morning was the first time. So if you did not get it, make sure that you do. Might be the most important message you've heard ever or in a long time uh, because uh, uh, you, don't, you don't get it. It's like going to the doctor. You want the medicine that you need. Now here in Luke chapter 18, uh, the Lord gives five examples of prayer. Won't take time to go into all of them, but in verse 3, there's a praying widow. In verse 10, there's a praying Pharisee. In verse 13, there's a praying publican. In verse 18, there's a praying ruler. And in verse 38, there's a praying beggar. The beggar was wanting his sight. The Pharisee wasn't right. The publican was. The widow was searching and praying. And the, uh, the, the uh, Pharisee and the publican prayed opposite prayers. So tonight, I want to just read a little bit of that in verse number one. You can study this when you get home, but there's five examples of prayer in this chapter. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought, ought, always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. That's the title of the message tonight. Men ought always to pray. The Lord said we ought to. We ought to. Now, if everything was done fixed and preordained that was going to happen, was going to happen, there would be no reason for us to pray all the time. The very fact that Jesus said, pray always, lets me know that action on earth initiates action in heaven. What we do and say in here uh, determines many times what God does and work back toward heaven. That puts a lot of responsibility on us. But as you've heard me say many times, it's youth rally time. You've heard me say it almost every year. We ought to work like it all depends on us and pray like it all depends on Him. And that's the right kind of balance to play. People, a lot of times people say, ah, just pray, the Lord will move when he gets ready. That's putting it all on him. And then other people say, we just got to do it, we just got to do it, we just got to do it and don't pray. That's putting it all on us. We ought to work like it all depends on us and pray like it all depends on him. Three things, very uh, quick here tonight, I'm talking about men ought to pray. Number one, why ought we to pray? We, uh, well, I'll tell you why we ought to pray. We owe it to ourselves. Uh, prayer keeps our heart in tune. I know you've heard me say this a hundred times, and you think I'm stressing something, but I'm not. My mom went around the house when I was growing up, and I remember her plain as day, she'd say, whisper a prayer in the morning, whisper a prayer at noon, whisper a prayer in the evening, will keep your heart in tune. I'll never forget, and she'd sing it. Whisper a prayer in the morning. And you know, that's why God answers prayers in the morning. God answers prayers at night. I didn't pay much attention to it then. I got saved and started preaching. I thought, that's what they were talking about. We owe it to ourselves to pray, on, uh, always to pray. I, I heard about one time uh, this preacher, and some preacher somewhere, and he was, he was a good preacher, but he was noted for reading his sermons. You know, a lot of uh, big shot, big time preachers actually read their sermons. 
I'd have a hard time doing that. Hey, that old, uh, old Billy Sunday, he used to write his notes in big old letters like that right there. And they said, why do you write your sermon notes so big? He said, so I can read them when I run past the pulpit. Uh, that's the way I'd have to write mine if I read it. But you know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't write mine out. I have a little things that I go by, some notes and, and, and outlines and points and stuff. But uh, then I just sort of leave it open there for the Lord to get in there and do whatever he wants to do. And, but a lot of preachers read them. And they write their sermon out word for word and stand it. And I'm not saying that's always been bad. Jonathan Edwards did it. Had one of the greatest sermons that have been preached. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. It all depends on if God's in it. But uh, this preacher, he always read his sermon. And if something happened that he couldn't see his note, he, he just in a mess. And uh, one day uh, the power went out and all the lights went out in the church and he thought somebody was playing a joke or something. He said, uh, I don't know what's wrong, but the, uh, and somebody hollered out, the power's off. Uh, the power's off, preacher. And he didn't know what to do. He could not preach without reading his notes. And the preacher said, well, if the power is off, it's time to pray. He said, he said, if the power is off, it's time to pray. He didn't know what else to do. He said, I can't preach because I can't see my notes. He said, it must be time to pray. And you know, that preacher that might not have meant it that way, but that's true in so many churches. The power is off. The power is off, y'all. There ain't no power. It's not enough just to have talent. We need power. It's not enough just to have uh, people that know some scripture. We need power. It's not enough just to have good bus workers and good Sunday school teachers. We need power. It's power that gets a hold of people's heart. It's power that changes people's hearts. It's power of convicting power. It ain't just hollering and screaming. It's power that does the job. And he said the power's off. We need to pray. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll say to you tonight, when the power's off, we need to pray. And we owe it to ourselves. Not only that, but we owe it to others. I, ain't you glad somebody prayed for you? I told you about this morning about Mrs. Edwards, that dear lady up there in Nebo who fasted six days and nights for the revival that I got saved in. I did not know her. After I got saved, they introduced me to her. They said, Danny, this is the lady that prayed and fasted six days. How I thank God for her. When I get to heaven, I'm going to look her up and hug her neck. I'm going to say thank you that you cared enough uh, to pray for me. Thank you. I used to like that little song, Somebody Pray for me. They had me on their mind. They sacrificed their time. They fell down on their knees and prayed for me. I don't know. Listen, you're thankful somebody prayed for you, ain't you? Well, all right, let's pray for somebody else. We owe it to them. We owe it to them. We're saved, y'all. We're saved. We owe it to them to get down on our knees and say, God, help my brother. God, help my mom and daddy. God, help my sister. God, help my husband. God, help my... We owe it to others to pray for them. We owe it to them. And then we owe it to God. We owe it to the Lord. Paul said, I'm debtor unto the Greeks and the barbarians, to the wise, to the unwise. We owe it. The Lord commanded us to pray. Amen. We have plans and programs, and there's nothing wrong with making plans. There's nothing wrong with having some organization. I mean, that's all right, but I'm telling you what the Lord wants. You know what the Lord wants? He wants us to desire Him. He wants us to desire Him. Never let it be said that we at Shining Light. Listen, there's a lot of churches can go right on without the Lord every Sunday and do their regular thing. I mean, if the Holy Ghost left and the, the Lord departed out of this world, brother, they could still go right on and do the same thing they do every Sunday. Let's not it be like that. We can't operate without Him. We need Him. He wants us to worship Him. He wants us to desire Him. He wants us to love Him. We owe it to Him. What about that lady? Uh, prayed and uh, they had company over, Christian family did and when they got ready to eat they had a family over and it was a hot day and everything and uh, the, the daddy was trying to impress his, his, the other people from the church he said now son, little six year old boy he said son you lead us in prayer and that's the blessing on the food, he said I don't know what to say he said just, just say what mommy says and he, and he said oh they bow the head and he said Lord why do I invite these people over here on a hot day like this that's what mommy said. That's where he learned his praying. That's where he learned his praying. And I'm telling you something, brother, you better learn how to pray and you better learn your, your kids. Your kids are going to pray like you pray. If you don't pray, your kids ain't going to learn how to pray. 
I heard about a, a, a preacher. It was, uh, it was, uh, I think it was actually George Miller, I think, uh, or one of them, one of them great preachers. Um, they said that he, um, uh, uh, he, he prayed and he prayed, John Patton. I'm sorry, John Patton, the famous missionary. And John Patton used to go around and he would crouch down outside his daddy's bedroom door and listen to his daddy pray. And he said his daddy would be in the bedroom and he'd be ringing them prayer bells of heaven and he'd be beseeching God to bless his family. And John Patton said, as a boy, I used to go and listen to my daddy pray. And he said, no matter where I went, no matter what I got into as a youth, no matter what I got into as a grown man, he said, if everything else fell apart, I could always hold on to what I knew my daddy believed in back there in that prayer closet. I'm telling you, it wasn't a sermon that made an impression on him. It wasn't a singing group that made an impression on him. It was an old-fashioned praying daddy that got in the prayer closet. And he said that he did that for 60 years. He said his daddy didn't let nothing stop him, no entertainment, no no sports event, not even sickness, 60 years on his knees every night in that bedroom praying. I'm telling you tonight, you want to affect this world, you want to have an effect on your family, you get in that prayer closet and you get God on you. You know what they said about them disciples that time? He said they had been with Jesus. They knew they had been with Jesus. Hey people, can I remind y'all of something? We may not be the best singers. I sure ain't the best preacher in the world, but I tell you one thing we can have. People can see us and they can say them people have been with Jesus and that's all that matters. There's enough talent being wasted out there in churches uh, to fill up this building tonight. There's enough money being wasted. There's enough uh, eloquence talk being wasted. What this world needs to see is a bunch of people that have been in the prayer closet on their prayer bones and say, I've been with the Lord. Why we ought to pray? Number two, when ought we to pray? What did the Lord say? Always, always. Men ought to pray, always. Amen. When Billy Sunday got saved, there's a man told him, an older Christian man, Billy Sunday, hadn't been saved long at all. And as a man put his hand on Billy Sunday's shoulder and he said, son, let me give you some advice. He said, if you'll do three things, God will bless you. He said, just do this. He said, spend 15 minutes every day in prayer. You talking to God. He said, spend 15 minutes every day reading your Bible. God talking to you. And he said, spend 15 minutes every day talking to somebody else about God. He said, if you'll let God talk to you, Bible, you talk to God, prayer, talk to somebody else, witnessing, you'll be all right. Then Billy Sunday said, I took that advice. And he said, I've done it, of course, more, more, more than 15. Uh, he said, I've done it all these years. And I'm a believer in that. I believe that. I believe if you'll get with God, you get with God in your prayer closet 15 minutes. You spend 15 minutes in that book and you read several chapters in the Bible and you witness every day, you'll be all right. You ain't gonna backslide. You'll stay in there for God. You'll live right. When we ought to pray, always at regular times. In Daniel chapter six and verse 10, evening, Daniel. David said, evening, morning, and at noon will I pray. I remember Lester Roloff singing that in the evening and morning will at noon, and at noon will I pray. You know why it says it like that? Because in the Old Testament, the Jewish day begins with the evening. It's six o'clock in the evening, evening and morning and at noon. We would say morning, noon, and night. But they'd say evening, morning, and at noon. Will I pray? Will I pray and cry aloud? And he shall hear my voice. He shall hear my voice. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray. Ladies and gentlemen, your kids ought to see you pray every morning. Ladies, if you got kids going to school, get up 10 minutes earlier before you wake them up. Get down on your knees. Say, God, build a hedge around my kids. Don't let the devil get get them. Bless my husband at work today. Watch over our family. Take care of us. Pray every day. Say, this man got, uh, hadn't been married long and uh, he, he, uh, he uh, went, his, his wife didn't, was just learning how to cook. And he went in, in the kitchen one day and she, and she had something was boiling on the stove and smoke was going up and she was sitting there like this. He said, honey, I think something's burning her. And she just he said, honey, you all right? I think, I don't know what it is. 
And she just sat there and wouldn't move. And he's looked and there was the directions she'd been reading. And it said, put this on the stove. Do not stir for 15 minutes. And you know what? She, that nut, uh, that thought she, that's, that's about how dumb some of them are. Uh, and you know what? She, she sat there and didn't move. And I thought, you know what? It would be good if we get in that prayer closet and don't move for 15 minutes. Wouldn't that be good? I'll be honest with you. You've heard me say this before. The hardest things in a Christian life for me to do is fast and pray. Fasting's the hardest, praying second. And I'm telling you, the way it's been lately, sometimes it's about as hard for me to pray as it is to fast. When I try to pray, my mind goes every direction in the world. I, I say, now, Lord, have, and I'm thinking about something else. Oh, as soon as I get down to pray, I start thinking about 15 things that I'm supposed to be doing. I should have done this. I should have done you know, And, you know, the best thing to do when you pray, leave your phone in the other room. You don't need to check it every three words and see if you've got a text. You'll live. I mean, leave that thing in the other room and brother lay that thing down and when the devil says you better go check your phone I think somebody's trying to get in touch with you just keep on praying amen just keep on praying ladies and gentlemen when ought we to pray always always at regular time I'll tell you some other time we need to pray when there's a special need when there's a special need like the youth rally those kids need it they have no idea what revival is they don't know God. I think about those kids that Brother Ronnie brings up here from down in, in Rock Hill. Those kids come in there, all they know is the world, rap music, rock and roll, drugs. I went into a house yesterday. Yesterday. Knocked on the door. I was by myself. I went up by myself visiting yesterday. I don't know where all you men do on Saturday morning, but you couldn't have that much work to do every Saturday. You couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't. I was by myself. You heard me. I was by myself. Because we had to divide up and I sent Ethan with Anthony to Hickory. And I knocked on the door of a trailer. And I went in. Two little boys about that big. And there was filth playing on the TV. I could see it out of the corner of my eye. And the woman sort of picked it up and got between me and the TV. I thought, thank God. She stood between me and the TV like, uh-oh, there's a preacher, I better not. I said, what about them kids? They wasn't that high and that high. I don't know what it was, but I did get a glimpse. At the corner of my eye, there was some bad stuff on TV. Let me tell you something tonight, people. A lot of them don't know God. They don't know His Spirit. They don't know the blessings that fill up our life like they're singing about. They don't even know that. That's why the Bible said they're lost. They're lost. You know why we need to pray? There is a need. There's a need. Lord have mercy. I think about that. We have the opportunity of a lifetime. I told Brother Kidd, I, I talked to him uh, Saturday, you know, at that camp meeting down there where I preached, and, uh, and I told him, I said, now, brother, you, 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 you're going to think you went, died and went to the zoo. I mean, this is going to be all. He said, that's all right. That's my kind of people. I said, no, it's ever, 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 everything you can imagine. I, I dressed every way, acting every way. That, that don't give y'all a right to dress every way. We'll talk about that at another time. I mean, people don't know no better, don't know no better, but you know better. Amen. And, and, but we'll talk about that another time. But I said they're dressed every way, act every way, talk every way. Lord have mercy. What is, do you realize that we'll have more lost people at our youth rally than most churches have in 10 years? I'm serious. In 10 years, maybe 20. And I'm telling you tonight, thank God we ought to pray when there's a need. And the next 40 days, there's a need. There's a need. There's a need. There's a need. And then we ought to pray when the Holy Spirit urges us. Sometimes the Lord will just urge you, put the burden on you to pray. Sometimes he burdens us. Um, George Mueller, I mentioned a while ago, in 1844, the Holy Spirit laid five men on his heart. He began to pray every day for five men that the Holy Spirit would deal with them. Sure enough, after 18 months, one man got saved. That left four. After another year and a half, another one got saved. That left three. After 12 and a half years, every day, 
Another one got saved. That left two. And I think one got saved about his funeral and another one after he was dead and gone. Forty years he prayed for them men. The Spirit urged him. Now, what happens to us? We'll get a burden. God, please save my mom and save my daddy, Lord. God, get a hold of my family. God, get a hold of my husband and wife and everything. And we'll do it what, two or three days and quit. George Miller, one of the greatest men in history, and prayed 40 years. Don't give up. When the Holy Spirit puts somebody on your heart, don't you quit praying. Don't you quit praying for your grandkids. Listen, my grandkids, they're getting older and older, and it scares me to death. I think uh, three, of them's, three of them's watching out yonder in Texas right now. Hey, y'all. And uh, uh, Carrie said, they said, we'll be watching tonight, Daddy. And I'm telling you, it scares me, the world they're growing up in. When I think about this old world, I mean, where are you going to find God anymore? I, all the old preachers are dying off. I mean, churches are deader than four o'clock. If you ain't got some kind of old fleshly mess, uh, that's about, uh, ain't no, all the, uh, thousands of little churches all over this country are closing the doors, people dying off. They ain't no young people. And I'm telling you tonight, don't you give up. You pray for your grandkids. You pray for them every day. Don't you give up praying for your mama for your daddy, somebody on drugs, don't you give up. Don't you give up. You keep on praying. Ring them prayer bells. Ring them, ring them. And if the devil says it ain't doing no good, you ignore him. He's a liar. And keep praying. Don't give up. They said this ship uh, uh, on the uh, Canadian coast some time ago, years ago, was in trouble and sent out an SOS. We're in trouble. No fresh water to drink. And the, the, whatever they are back home, the Coast Guard like, like, people sent out a message and said, let down your boat, your, uh, your, uh, your side buckets for water. They said, we ain't got no water. Help us. They said, let down your buckets. They had sailed into the St. Lawrence River, which is fresh water. And they were sailing on fresh water and didn't even know it. Had all that water right there at their disposal. And all they had to do is lift that bucket down. I believe that so many Christians were sailing over the, what the greatest power in the universe runs through us, lives inside of us. Tap into it, brother. Get a hold of it. Listen, the God of the universe lives inside you. He lives inside me. He's God Almighty. He can do anything. Hallelujah, glory to God. Woo, he lives in us. Let down your buckets for a bunch of water and the Holy Ghost will fill it. Drink from the well that never runs dry. Number three, what ought we to pray? Not like the, like the Pharisee, but like the publican. In verses 10, 11, 12, and 13, publican and Pharisee both come to prayer meeting one day and the Pharisee said, Lord, I thank thee that I'm not like other people. I fast twice a week. Did you see me? I raised my hand. I fast two days, not just one. Yes, sir, I'm the best you've got, Lord. I'm better than these other people. You know what? God didn't even look at that guy. His fasting was a waste of time. His praying was a waste of time. He was full of himself. Brother Kidd preached a message the other day. Lord, have mercy. He preached on reduction. And it was one of them you hate. He said, you know that scripture said, John the Baptist said, he must increase, but I must decrease. The bigger you get, the less the Lord is in your life. You know what the Lord big in your life? You get little. You get little. You get humble. Get out of the way. He's not interested in your talent. He's not interested in your great ability. He's not interested in how smart you are or how great you are. God's looking for people that say, I'm a nothing, I'm a nobody, here I am. And the old publican over here said, smote his breast, wouldn't even look up. I'm afraid to look up, afraid he'll kill me. God be merciful to me, a sinner. And brother, that old boy went home, he was right, and the other guy went home with his sins on him. You know how to pray? You know what to pray? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. It's not my brother and my sister. It's me, O oh Lord. Don't go there and pray. Lord, I pray for these wicked people around here that you'd do so. You know what we need to do first? Get old. Oh, I need to get old Daniel. You know who gives me more trouble than anybody? This one right here. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Them rock singers ain't our biggest enemy. Our flesh is our biggest enemy besides the devil himself. Like the publican. Number two, with importunity, 
What does that mean? That means not quitting, not giving up, praying the same thing every day, over and 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 over, like John Patton's daddy did, 60 years. And number three, with childlike faith and trust. Just like a kid. Years ago, there was a great preacher in this country named Dr. Charles Fuller. Charlie Fuller, they called him. He was an evangelist. Back in the days, you know, they, they come up, uh, uh, J. Harold Smith and, and Olive B. Green, all them guys. Radio was the big way of getting the gospel out over, the, over America in the, in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. And still is, but people don't, you know, it's the Internet now. But... Charlie Fuller had the old-time gospel hour, the old-time revival hour, something like that was the name of his program. And everybody that's saved knew, knew Charlie Fuller's program, the old-time revival hour. And old Charlie Fuller, uh, they, they said he, he got to make his program one day, and they had an outdoor tabernacle light with a tin roof on it, and it was absolutely pouring the rain. They said it rains hard. It sounded like bam, bam, pounding on that tin roof. Old Dr. Fuller got up there, way out in Iowa, where the tabernacle was. The heavy rain pounded on there, and he said, Lord, it's just about time for the program to come on. Lord, we can't have this program with it raining like this. They can't even hear me. And Lord, if you don't stop this rain, then I'm not going to be able to make my program today. Lord, for Jesus' sake, would you let the rain stop? And them people that stood around there said in less than three minutes, it just tapered off, tapered off, and quit. Stopped. And Brother Fuller come on and preached that sermon and preached that sermon, and they said as soon as he got done, they backed off in a minute or two, here comes that rain again. Less than five minutes, it started pouring again. Now, you know what people say? Oh, that was just a coincidence. They said it rained all the way around there. You know, back in the old days, God, people used to pray and God did stuff like that. It's not just all coincidence. I don't know how many of y'all remember that, but the Lord did that for us at a youth rally. One of the first things we had over here at the old building, we had in that tent. Y'all remember that? It rained on every single side. And I cried, I prayed, I begged God. And brother, it didn't rain on that tent. And brother, you say, listen, that makes you something. No, that makes something. I think you got the same God I got. We got the same God Elijah had. He prayed that it didn't rain, and it didn't. And Charlie Fuller prayed that it didn't rain, and it didn't. I'm telling you, pray with childlike faith. And let's pray if it's God's will that it wouldn't rain for the youth rally. Now, if it's the Lord's will and he's got a reason for it, we'll take it. Lord, you remember that one year? Kids were sliding down the hill in the mud and everything, and it was steamy hot in there. Oh, it was an office mess. Everyone, it turned out good. But let's pray that it wouldn't rain. And that's how we need to pray, with childlike faith. Get ourselves out of the way. Don't forget to pray. Why ought we to pray? When ought we to pray? And what ought we to pray? Let's stand.